Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu and Astarinahu and Astaghfiruhu. On Audu Billah, he means Shururi and Fusina, I mean Sayati Amalina. May Yad Hilla, who fell a mudilla, who are my Yudli, who fell a hadiella, or a shadow a la ilaha illa law, Wahdahu la Sharikalahu, or a shadow Anna Mohammedan, Abduhu or a Sulu, Sallahu Ali was Salam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our own bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none, no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that there is no partner to Allah. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's servant and messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa quulu kawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta illaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azeema. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves. And do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah and say what is right. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yasili Amri Wahlul Uqtam Milisani Yafbahu Holi Subhanaka La Ilmanana Illa Ma'alam Tana Inna Kanta Lahim Ul Hakim. Again, Salamu Alaikum Rahmatullah Abrakatahu. Again, Jumma Mubarak is such a blessing to be with you all. The uh, Sahaba had a dua that they would recite at the beginning of the new year or new month, um, as related by uh, Abdullah ibn Hisham, anhu. and the dua goes like this, that Allahumma adkhilu alayna bil, um, uh, bil amni wal iman wal salamati wal islam wa jiwarim minash shaitan wa ridwanim minal rahman. That, oh Allah, may bring this month or this year upon us with security, with iman, uh, faith, bring with belief, uh, with safety, with Islam, and protect, protection from the shaitan and with your pleasure. So we recently had uh, begun the new year of 2023 and recently rang it in, uh, at least according to the Gregorian calendar, just you know under a week ago. And this transition of years is often marked by celebration in our society, a party, a, you know, a laundry list of New Year's resolutions, all kinds of things that are there. It's a, there's, there's a lot of commemoration that occurs for the new year that is rung in. Um, and these resolutions and in, 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 in speaking in a matter uh, end up don't really lasting in a sense. The, we see the memes and the images online and social media of gyms that are on December 1st, completely empty, at 31st, completely empty, and then on January 1st, they are packed to the brim. Everybody's on the treadmill, everybody's uh, lifting weights and whatnot. And people see just how much in that time you know, and then looking in these resolutions, how much they might not have gotten to do in the past year, or they see what other people have done and the progresses that they have made, and they may feel inspired, they might feel motivated, or they may feel just pressured to go in and to do more and to bring on these resolutions. Um, they pile on all sorts of revolution resolutions. And 2023's most popular so far have been uh, exercising more, at least according to a survey that 52% reported uh, wanting to exercise more, 50% uh, eating healthier, losing weight, 40% saving more money, spending more time with uh, family, friends, etc. cetera. Uh, goals that I imagine are not that different from 2022, 2021, 2020, and the years before. It seems pretty consistent when you think about New Year's resolutions or you ask somebody about New Year's resolutions. These are probably the ones that come to mind at the forefront. Yet how, how, how often, how often do these things actually happen? How often do these resolutions actually get seen through from start to finish? And how often do these resolutions actually may end up failing or fizzling out? You know, oftentimes many of us can speak from experience on this. I myself can speak from experience on uh, some of the, the dismal outcomes of some of these resolutions for myself. We come into the new year saying, you know, new year, new me, pile on the resolutions, and then we may end up burning ourselves out. 
might end up spiraling or sputtering into the end of the new year. And then we get back into the same cycle saying that, oh, with this next year, we'll go ahead and we'll do, uh, we'll try it again and we'll do all these different things. And it may not come to fruition. So the dates, the dates don't always coincide. For us, as we start 2023, when we start 2023, it can be a benefit for us to maybe think about, maybe to mention, maybe to ruminate a little bit on the wisdom of why the Islamic New Year, with, which starts with the Hijrah, we're commemorating a time when the Prophet ﷺ and his companions escaped from Mecca to Medina, holding to faith, seeking asylum, looking for refuge, looking for safety in Medina with the other Muslims over there, that they may practice their religion freely, that they may start fresh, start again. Maybe in this, in this rumination, maybe in this space, we can think about how our year, our start to this new uh, Gregorian calendar 2023 year can be a little bit different. That think about how the Islamic calendar brings that, that in, what, what, what it starts the year with, what it, uh, the event that it starts the year with. It starts with a event that commemorates, uh, that in, in, in doing so, it commemorates this aspect of migration or this aspect of striving or to, to leave, to uh, go somewhere, to actually make a change, to physically go from a, one destination to another, to migrate. It commemorates faith. It commemorates trust in Allah. It commemorates safety, security. It commemorates practice of the religion freely and in community with other people. It echoes this dua that we had just read at the beginning from the Sahaba that says, oh Allah, bring us upon this month, this bring us this year, this new change in time with security, with Iman, with safety, with Islam, with the protection from the shaitan, and with your pleasure. So thinking about how in their renewed dua that they would make, in their renewed prayer that they would make, how much of it may have been rooted in this essence of this event of the hijrah, of this event that literally matched each and every one of those things of iman, of uh, security, of safety, of Islam, all these different things of protection that then paralleled into the start of something. So they started this new year, they started these new changes, any new month or whatever it may be with a grounded sense of, uh, of intentionality, but also grounded in an experience of an event and, and not something that was just a uh, you know black and white note or an annotated footnote in a, in a book or somewhere, but it was a very lived real experience that happened for them in, in, in a spiritual sense. It happened physically in the time for the Prophet ﷺ, but it lasted in their memories going on and going forward after that. And so the Islamic New Year, we see in this sense, is founded then on values. It's not founded on a numeral or temporal shift in time or anything like that, but it's founded on this reminder. It's, it's a reset and a refresher and reminder of where things had began for the Muslim community, where they had begun in that sense, where they started out, that they started from a mindset of scarcity and not abundance, that they started with gratitude for what was there and what they did not have. They started for appreciation in a sense and thinking about the parallels of this journey, that they start the new year from this aspect because the Muslim community continued continue to grow. We, in our own respects, as individuals, as families, continue to grow in different ways. We may come into the, uh, to contact with other things. We may start to have different things that come to us. Yet the, the, the mindset that is kept in this space is the one of that same kind of scarcity that marked when the Prophet Sun began his migration. So that each new year begins as if it was like for the, the Prophet Sun to begin his migration. Thinking about if we did begin each new year, as we do right now, if we begin each new year as the Prophet ﷺ had with respect to the hijrah, what things would we value? What would we hope for? What would our resolutions be in an environment like this? How would we see ourselves changing spiritually, physically, relationally, or in any other way? But even with these things, we do need to be practical. How can we tangibly notice ourselves progressing, improving, growing, becoming the new us or the new you that we want to become? So even with the best of intentions, we might approach the new year with generic goals or hopes along the lines of wanting to become more religious or more connected to Allah or becoming better Muslims, and all of which are noble goals and which should be cultivated and instilled. 
Uh, but when they remain undefined, when they remain very generic in a sense, when they remain solely aspirational, they can oftentimes lead us to feeling like failures if we don't see ourselves uh, in the change that we had hoped to incorporate or that we don't end up doing the things that we hoped that we could set out to do. But yet there's this other side as well that when we set this goal, we set these goals and these aspirations, we might often pile on a laundry list of new habits and changes that we want to accomplish, uh, that we want to get through and want to incorporate or so that we think that we will start the new year saying things like, uh, all right, I want to become, I'm going to become a more uh, better Muslim, more connected to my religion, more connected to Allah, more connected to my deen. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go do tahajjud every day. I'm going to read a, uh, an hour of the Quran every day. I'm going to memorize X, Y, Z chapters every week. So many un other things. And again, and not knocking the goals themselves. Each of us should strive to do each of these things, if not more in different ways. But oftentimes we see the change in the years that come with 2021, 2022, 2023, and we feel that with the overarching goals that we have of becoming these things that we want to become, that we need to pile it on with the addition, new additions to make them come to fruition. And ultimately, we may end up leaving, uh, feeling burned out, being burned out, frustrated, and even worse, disconnected from our faith, Le uh, less of hope with respect to uh, our faith and with respect to changing. So the hope today is that as we get through the first week of 2023, we take a moment, take a moment to sit and think about how we can truly become our best selves and the new us that this year uh, we hope for and how in using the substance and the wisdom of the Islamic New Year start with respect to the hijrah, that uh, we can help to inform our hopes and plans to not just be action items, not just be tasks, not just be hopeless measures that we want to incorporate just to make ourselves feel better, but substantive things that can help us truly become uh, new people, better people, improved people um, as we continue from the year going forward. So just five things for us, inshallah, to, to take away from this. Just as we would, as if we are embarking on a journey, escaping from danger, heading towards a place of safety and hope and newness. Similarly, we set that intention when we start the new year. We don't start it with a, we, we think about just as the Prophet ﷺ is the night before, the day before, in preparing for the hijrah and preparing for this dangerous journey that's going to be made to a place that uh, is, is of a place of hope, a place of security, thinking what would the Prophet ﷺ have spent his night doing? Would have probably sent, spent his night? Would he have spent his night partying? Would he spent his night, you know, celebrating all these different things? Not to say that, you know, it's not a good thing to celebrate or to be happy or to socialize in a sense, but think about he's about to undertake a major change, not just uh, in a spiritual sense, but logistically. He's about to make a huge, uh, you know, uh, decision and make a huge step that's going to be uh, a very dangerous journey as well. But he sets himself in that space, thinking about what would he do on that night before? What does his New Year's Eve look like? What is that? What does that space look like? And firstly, like I said, with parallel to the Hijrah, we set ourselves in that event and we begin as our Prophet taught us with the remembrance of Allah, thinking that if the Prophet was in that moment right before the Hijrah, right before undertaking this migration, what would he have done from his teachings, from the instructions that we've received? Most likely beginning with that remembrance of Allah. The Prophet taught us that uh, any action that is undertaken without the mentioning of Allah or the Bismillah or mentioning the name of Allah is an action that is incomplete. The Quran tells us that in the remembrance of Allah that uh, our hearts will find rest, our, our souls will find rest. And at the end of our khutbahs, we oftentimes, we say, uh, that remember Allah, Allah will remember you. And the remembrance of Allah is the highest virtue. It's the highest value. It's the highest virtue that we can have. And so with this new year, as with any action, we start with the Bismillah. We start with the mentioning of the name of Allah with our action. We start with Alhamdulillah. We send praise to Allah for all that we've been given, whether uh, that which we have, that which we are grateful for, all of the different things. We send praise upon Allah, and we start with this intentionality, this groundedness in Allah's remembrance that is there. So thinking about the parallels to undertaking a hijrah and starting a new year, that we uh, start that anything that's about to happen, we do it with the remembrance of Allah, and we do it uh, in, in complete faith and trust in Allah. 
So secondly, as we go along this journey, alongside that divine remembrance, we have the intentionality. We set our intentions and our hopes in something aspirational. What do we hope to do or to become? Do we hope to become better Muslims? Do we hope to become better people? Do we hope to become more connected to Allah? Great. These are all good things. Think about what are those, what are, what is the goal? What are the, what is, what is our hijra in a sense? What is our, uh, our, our migration or our journey? What, what are we walking towards? What are we going to strive towards? Uh, it can be several things, but just from an overarching standpoint, do we have a vision? What is our vision for this year? What is, what is, what do we want to kind of overarch it with? And is it something we want to become more connected? We want to become better in certain aspects that have a vision, have something that we can be, what's that, whatever that destination is, that Medina for us, what is that Medina for us in our hijrah? Thirdly, how can we then practically act on this vision or on this hope and the broader change that we're hoping to make that we seek to uh, incorporate? How can we make this practical and measurable in a sense? And in order to make this vision come to fruition in order to make this a reality, taking on our goals, but being reasonable, but making our goals practical, making them measurable. There's the concept of smart goals or specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound goals, not to overwhelm us, but so that we can have a set path. We have a path with which we can navigate ourselves from where we are point A to our destination or our vision in point B that in, uh, as the Prophet had taught us that verily the deen or the religion is easy and no one burdens himself in the religion but that it overwhelms them and to follow the right course to seek closeness with Allah to give glad tidings and to seek help from with Allah for uh, through worship in the morning and in the evening and part of the night and so for our goals we not only set them cognizant of our abilities and of all the things that are we are mindful for our work our families all these different things we're cognizant of that but we make them gradual we make them measurable and we give space for those goals to improve we give space for those goals to get better over the year and we don't make them finite at the very onset we may have trouble doing fajr or for, sorry tr trouble doing the hajj every single day um, for the rest of the year but it may be that we want to start out reasonably. We want to start out saying that we want to try and do Fajr maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. And then we build it up and build it up, but we give space for it to grow. But if we start all maximized at level 100 for every single thing at the beginning of the year, we, will, we can only go down from there. It's going to be hard to kind of go up from when you have that max set. So be reasonable in that sense. Fourthly, how can we set our goals in a way or set these changes in a way that we can reflect on them? The progress that we're making and to be able to measure them to be able to see how we're doing with uh with incorporating them you know we have this aspect of muraqaba in our faith tradition that a person is watching over their heart their soul they're reflecting they're constantly trying to gain closeness to allah but they have this aspect of being able to sit with themselves if you have to, this aspect of being able to be intention and uh, intentional and present to where they are and secondly there's the aspect of muhasaba of accountability, taking account of our actions, so seeing ourselves that as we are looking at our goals, as we are looking at our progress, as we are looking at the things that we are incorporating, when we measure them, when we are doing them, are we, uh, we're not just doing them for the sake of filling up a spreadsheet or for the sake of uh, keeping track or creating graphs or doing all that stuff. We're doing them as a part of something wholesome, something substantive, but we take account just like in a journey, the first night uh, we are able to go, we settle in, we see what 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 do we have left? How far did we go? Did we do something that we can improve on for the next leg of the journey and continue to go on? Uh, the journey between Mecca and Medina was several days in a sense. And so they had time to be able to go, stop, rest, evaluate how what their rations are, how much uh, energy do they have, how much water do they need to provide for their animals, and then continue from there to reevaluate, to reassess, and to be able to uh, actively and dynamically interact with their journey rather than just setting a course and just going on autopilot to their destination. So it's a very intentional practice every step of the way in the sense. And then lastly, can we observe changes in who we are? Can we observe changes in the world around us? Have we become tangibly, have we become better or different people? Do we see that difference in us? Or do we still find ourselves relapsing to doing the things that we had done before? How we may talk about people behind their back, 
how we may not have control of our tongues, how we may be addicted to certain things. Are any of these impacted? And if they're not, asking ourselves, are our goals a little bit different? Is our vision something that uh, is not being lived up to? That we see in the Prophet's teachings that the most complete of believers, most complete believers in faith, absolutely complete, are those who are the best in their character and the best to their families. Do we observe the changes? We may be doing, we may be uh, you know, doing our tahajjud every single day. We may be giving that hour to the Quran every day. We may be doing uh, our salah in the mosque every single day. We may be doing all these different things. But are we still the people that other people feel are not approachable? Do we still find ourselves being quick to temper? Do we still find ourselves being harsh? Do we still find ourselves in our character being, uh, be, being maybe not as changed or improved as our rituals? So evaluate in that sense. That, and as the Quran says, it very, verily Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change themselves. And so inshallah, as we conclude, we want to reflect on the space that how we look at our new year, how we look at the year ahead, no longer do we sh should we maybe just think of it as something finite in the sense that what we do here until the end of December is is all that's going to be there. Our our year can go beyond that. Our 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 goals that we set for ourselves can go beyond that. They don't need to be bound to just specifically a a, a, a set time in the sense. They can be something that we work on continuously, just like in the hijrah. What is what is our our 2023 that we have is our hijrah, and what is this journey? What is our destination? Knowing where we're going to go how we might get there, and what our vision is for when we do get there, thinking about how do we tangibly incorporate these things. And so, like we said, uh, and sharing the process and Hadith, the religion has been made easy. And to not burden ourselves in a degree that we overwhelm. We want to make this a year of improvement. We want to make this a year where we become better. And we want to make this a year where uh, Allah is pleased with the changes that we incorporate. And we want to make this a year that is not devoid of any intent, uh, ill intent, or and is not devoid of any uh, remembrance of Allah, but it's one that is filled with the remembrance of Allah, filled with the intentionality. But as we sit here at the precipice of uh, and at the, the conclusion of 2022, at the front of 2023, looking ahead to this whole year, thinking, how can we practically incorporate things and, and, and intentions and behaviors and visions that will help us get to a space that practically we can see ourselves become uh, who we would like to be and how we would like to get there. So inshallah, may Allah make for us in 2023 a year that is filled with mercy, forgiveness, ease, uh, as well as the help that continuously comes of Allah and a, a year that uh, allows us to do the things and enables us to do the things to uh, be able to succeed in all that we endeavor to. And may Allah allow for the previous year to have closed uh, the forgiveness of sins with the forgiveness of our shortcomings and the blessings of all that sacrifices and all the hard work that had been done uh, to come into fruition and to continue into this year. And may Allah enable us to continue to see this year till the end. And may Allah accept the sacrifices and the, uh, the, the work and all of the prayers and everything that we have put in in the year before, as well as for those who may have not been with us here to see 2023. And may Allah allow us to let 2023 be a year where we reset our intentions, where we are grounded in the intention uh, that we are here with Allah, that we are grounded in, uh, in a hope for security as our Sahaba had prayed that we were grounded in hope for security, grounded in a space seeking Iman, seeking belief and faith, seeking safety, seeking Islam, seeking a protection from evil, seeking the pleasure of Allah. May Allah bestow all of this upon us, that Allah allows us to leave this Jumra better than we had come into it, and allows us to leave every space that we go better than we come into it, and allow us to enter the next Jumra better than we had left this one. And to make from all of our sins, make all of our mistakes, all of our shortcomings, the opportunities for growth, repentance, purification, excellence, from not just this Jumma or next Jumma, but for each and every part of the year, and to allow us to set, uh, be able to accomplish all the goals that we have set for ourselves and the vision that we set for ourselves, uh, and to make this a year of ease and a year of justice for those who are not so privileged and who are subject to injustice and subject to oppression. May Allah enable us to be those who are liberating and those who are healing of uh, those injustices and to help those uh, in, in, in being able to uh, get to a better space, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Uh, 
we just send our conclusion with uh, send up our praise and blessings upon the Prophet Allah bestow your favor upon the Prophet and the Prophet Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad as you have bestowed your favor upon the family of Ibrahim and send blessings upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad as you have sent blessings upon the family of Ibrahim among all the nations. You are indeed worthy of praise, full of glory. Our Lord, accept this service from us, accept our sacrifice, accept this effort and endeavor from us. Indeed, you are the all hearing, the all knowing, and accept our prayer and humble dua. I mean, again, Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh, wishing you a blessed Jummah Mubarak, a start to 2023. And may Allah make this a year of blessing for each and every one of us. Wassalam, Assalamu alaikum.